Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Quick Access Toolbar in Microsoft Access. We're going to add some commonly used features to it. I'm going to show you how to use it to open up forms and reports and how to run a macro. Today's question comes from Aaron in Montreal, Quebec, up in Canada. Aaron says, I see in a lot of your videos, you have buttons on that toolbar across the top of your access window. That looks cool. How do you set that up? I'd love to be able to put some commands I use often up there. Can you use it to open forms and reports? Well, of course, Aaron, that little guy is called the Quick Access Toolbar. It's right up there. And you'll probably see in some of my other videos, in fact, all of them, I've got some custom buttons up there that I've added for my own system. Let me show you how to do it for yours. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download. You can grab a copy of this database off my website if you want to. You'll find a link down below in the description below the video. Now, as you can see up here, I've got a bunch of buttons that I added to my Quick Access Toolbar. I've got buttons like Run Query, Design View, Print Preview, and so on, and some custom ones over here like Open Main Menu that I've set up on my system. If you download a copy of this database, you won't have those buttons because the default setting is to save the quick access toolbar changes on the computer that you're on, not in the database. I will show you how to change that setting in the extended cut for the members. But how do you make changes to this guy? Well, right click on it and go right here where it says customize quick access toolbar. This menu appears. Here you can see a list of popular commands, commands not on the ribbon, all commands, there's tons of them. Okay, file tab, print preview tab, home tab, and so on. This is basically a list of all the different commands that are available on the ribbon. I've added run, design view, print preview, and format painter. I use those all the time, so I want those available up in the quick access toolbar. I've also got some custom buttons that I've set up to open up my main menu, open up my search form, open up the customer form, and so on. I'll show you how to set these up in a few minutes. But first, go over here on the left-hand side and find the command that you're looking for that you want to add to the Quick Access Toolbar. So let's say you use Find a lot. Click on Find, hit the Add button, and it puts it right over here. And you can move it up or down with these little buttons over here. All the way up to the top means all the way over to the left on the Quick Access Toolbar. All right, so I got Find over there. What else do you want? Let's take a look here. Let's say, um, let's find something that's not on this popular commands list. Let's drop this down. Let's go to external data tab and then, um, oh, I don't know, export to RTF file. Add that over there. So you can find pretty much everything that's on the ribbon in these lists. Okay, but I got these two things there. There's a couple other features down here, like show the quick access toolbar. You can hide it if you don't want to see it. Or where do you want to see it? Above the ribbon or below the ribbon? I like it above. It used to be below. I didn't like that at all. All right, come over here and hit OK. It says you have to close and reopen the database, but you generally don't have to. Hit OK, and you'll see your changes right up there. There's the two buttons that I added. And if you click on them, it'll run that feature. There's find and replace, and I'm not going to click on that one. Want to get rid of them? Right click. Customize, come over here, click, and then go remove, and then remove, and then OK. And there you go. Now they're gone. OK, now, what's with this open main menu button I got right here? I got some other ones for some things like a customer form and my YouTube members forms and stuff like that. They're just buttons that open up different forms that I have in my different databases. Now, if this is closed, that's my main menu, and I click on that, it opens up the main menu. Wow, look at that. Now, how do you do that? Well, you have to have a macro. Right there, I've got a macro called Open Main Menu. And this guy does that. Watch. Boop. Right? And this button, all this does is it runs that macro. Okay? So, how do you set up a macro to do that? Well, I cover macros in depth in my Microsoft Access Advanced Level 1 class. There's a link to it right there. If you want to learn a lot more about setting up macros, i got six different levels of classes on just dealing with macros. And I listed Access Expert 5, too, because I cover a lot more with customizing the ribbon and the Quick Launch Quick Access Toolbar in Access Expert 5. So you'll find links to both of those down below. But let me give you the quick and dirty as far as how to set up this macro. So... Let's say I've got my, uh, my customer form, looks like that. Okay, this button opens up 
main menu. Okay. Now I've got a little button right there that says open customer form, but it gives me an error message because this database doesn't have the macro called open customer F. Okay. So we're going to have to make that. It's in a different database, right? So how do we create a macro? Go to create. Come on over here and pick macro. I'm so used to going to module. I only use modules. I almost never use macros. In fact, one of the only reasons I ever will use a macro is to do this, is to set up these little buttons for the quick access toolbar. So go to macro. All right, this thing appears. We can close the action catalog. This is really easy. You're going to come in here where it says new action and type in open, and open form is the first one. All right, you can drop this list down and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff in here, but we want open form. What's the form name? It's customer F. And again, you can drop this down. Customer F. Okay. There's a bunch of other commands on here you don't need. But let's just save this. Control S, save. This is going to be open customer F. Okay. Now I can close that. If I run that macro from over here, open customer F, boop, it opens it up. And since I have a button up here that already runs that macro, look at this. Oh, look at that. This button runs that macro. Okay. And there's the form. Now, let's add a button to a form up here that I don't already have built. So let's say I want to open up the order form. Where's the order form? There's the order form. Okay. So we need a macro first, right? So let's go to create. Macro. Click here. Open form. Which form? Order F. Save it. Open order F. That's my open order F macro. Okay, so it's right down here. So if I run it from here, there it is. Okay, now we have to add that up here to the quick launch toolbar because I don't have it up there. I call it quick launch toolbar all the time. It's the quick access toolbar officially. I think in an older version, it used to be called the quick launch toolbar. Yeah, I just had to Google it. My, my brain's turned off. The quick launch toolbar was a feature that goes back to Windows 7. It's been gone for a little while. Now it's called the quick access toolbar up here in Office. Okay, so right click, customize the quick access toolbar. Come to this drop down here, go to macros. There's macros, right? There's a list of all the macros in the database. Click on open order F, add it. All right, there it is. Slide it down to the bottom or wherever you want it. Now, if you want to change the little picture that's there, see how I got custom pictures on these, right? I got a little happy face for my customers. I got a search form with a little magnifying glass. See that? All you got to do is go to modify. And here's the, a little gallery of all the different icons that are available. Let's say this is orders, right? So let's find something that looks like orders. How about uh, this thing here? All right. Hit OK. There's my open order form. All right. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And there it is. There's my little button to... Open up my order form. See that? And it doesn't go to any particular order, but it just opens up the form. That's handy if you're bouncing around, you got a bunch of different stuff open, and you want to just click on that to just switch that form. That's nice and easy. Or switch back to my main menu. That's mostly why I have this button here. Same thing if you want to open up a report, right? Create macro. Drop this down. Open report. What's the report name? I'll open up my order invoice R. How do you want to view it? I like to do print preview. I don't like sending stuff straight to the printer. I like to go to print preview, look at it, make sure it's okay. Then I hit the print button. And that's why I've got this button up here, all right, which goes to print preview. See? All right. And then we can save this, open invoice R. All right, close that. Right click, customize, macros, open invoice R, add it. Move it where you want it, and then hit OK. And there it is. I didn't customize the button, but there you go. There's your invoice. See how easy that is? So once again, Access Expert 5, if you want to learn a lot more about customizing that quick access toolbar and the ribbon, and Access Advanced 1, if you want to learn more about macro design. And if you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, I'm going to show you how to make system-wide shortcut keys. So in addition to having those buttons across the top in the quick access toolbar, we can actually make system-wide shortcut keys. So if you want to open up your main menu with control M, you could do that. If you want to open up that report with control shift R, 
You can do that too, and they'll work across your entire database. We'll have to learn how to set up something called sub macros and the special auto keys macro and how to write global functions. I'll teach you how to run code segments from inside there too. Lots of stuff coming up in the extended cut for the members, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And of course, gold members can download these databases. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.